For the best possible experience, find a quiet place and use headphones. Thank you. Sometimes, it's painful to think about my home. When I do, memories come flooding back to me in a torrent, drowning me in a mix of both happiness and sadness, paralyzing me into a perpetual state of limbo, a feeling of being neither alive or dead. But these memories also bring with them a familiar yet distant feeling a warm and reassuring emotion that I can find only in my mind's eye. Trust. In this strange new world, trust is a forgotten relic of our lost civilization, a rare commodity that seems impossible to come by. It's an instinctual mechanism that can form the greatest empires or bring them crashing down. Before the end of the world, I never realized how fragile, how much of an illusion the state of trust actually was. In a way, trust is a belief that others will do well to you and that you in turn will do well for them. Perhaps it's the most primitive form of currency exchange there is. And now, the market has been changed. How is it possible to know what trust is? when it's no longer recognizable? It is the question for the ages. How to deal with the new societal paradigm? How to again be comfortable turning your back when everything in front of you is potentially deadly? Past Bedtime Studio presents Philip's Apocalypse Based on original material by Michael Johnston. Written by J.B. Stephen with Ben Ajang. Philip voiced by Michael Johnston. Music by J.B. Stephen. Produced by Ben Ajang. Episode 4. Trust. Share. <coughs> kind of. <coughs> All right, just a little more. <sighs> I wish I had a sled and you could drag it. <laughs> the wolf.
wolf turned his head in curiosity. He watched me pull the carcass of the deer from the hospice interior all the way to the outside, silently asking me the entire time when exactly we were going to eat. Oh. oh no, it's okay. I, I know you're hungry. I've just been sitting here watching you do all the work. And yeah, I'm sure you're Wolf had been surprisingly tolerant of my presence, curiously watching me as I struggled to drag the deer from inside the hospital to the forest where I could make a fire and cook the meat. I noticed that his outward demeanor often rotated somewhere between that of an intimidating yet wise animal to that of a very innocent and curious puppy. In a way, he was an echo of myself. Though at the time, I had quite a few years to keep maturing before I could label myself as anything near intimidating. Well, I mean, you did take it down. You're a better hunter than me. Or wise, for that matter. Jeez. Well, actually, it's kind of saved me from getting impaled. <laughs> so, thanks. All right, you hungry? I am. I could still hardly believe that he was there with me, alive and debatably well. He was also very skinny, like me, and had a limp in his back right paw from his scuffle with the deer. The wolf's wound looked serious, his paw leaving bloody prints along the inside of the hospital. The hardest part would be cleaning him up, but I would cross that bridge later. Still, I couldn't help but ask myself why he was not simply fighting me for the deer, or even just eating me. Why had he even saved me at all? I figured it's likely that he might have had some human contact in the past. He was still wary of me getting too close, but I'd never felt threatened by his warnings. I would have to slowly gain his trust, but I had a few other tricks up my sleeve. <laughs> Small catches one thing, but a whole freaking deer. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, you hungry? Hey, come on, you want this? Oh, I know you want this. Here. Well, what's the matter? You don't want it? All right, well, I'll have to eat it myself. Uh, ew, no, no. <laughs> okay, uh, I am having too much fun. Okay, you're gonna have to come get it if you want it. Come on. I could see him working out the situation in his mind, and he seemed to be asking himself two questions. One, should I take the meat? And two, how can I do it without getting too close to this human? Yeah, that's right, come on. Just a little closer. Right there. Come on, boy. I'm not gonna hurt you. Come on. Oh, there you go. Oh, see? That wasn't so hard. And uh, well, when you're done, I can take a look at that paw. No? Okay. All right. 
I decided it would be a good idea to get a fire going as quickly as possible so I could get my strength back. There was little sense in me butchering the whole deer when I could barely cut through the meat as it was. I'd been running on fumes for days, and seeing the wolf eating made me very hungry. Right then and there, that deer steak, cooked over an open fire on a beautifully warm night, was the best thing I'd ever tasted in my entire life. Oh yeah. How you doing with that bone over there? Yeah, I know what you mean. I looked over my situation. An abundance of food, an open flame, and a new friend. I felt happy, but it wasn't quite complete. I had clung to my distrust and inner darkness for so long that my first reaction to warmth and comfort was that of disbelief. For so long, I had lived my life like a closed fist, and now. When I had a moment to finally let go of that built-up tension, I still shook with uneasiness, swinging somewhere between feelings of contentment and nihilism. Okay, what do you think? You gonna let me look at that paw? I figured now was a good time while he was distracted by his bone, although hopefully he wouldn't think I was trying to steal his food. Still bleeding. I gotta do something. Hey, come on. Let me see. It's okay. It's okay. He gladly took the meat from my hand, barely noticing that I'd reached out and touched him. Okay. Good. Yeah, that's good. See? Not gonna hurt you. <sighs> when he finally took notice, he stopped and looked at me. But he didn't seem to mind much as I slowly petted his side. Baby steps. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Oh. oh, good boy. First of all, he needed a name, and I already had the perfect one. <laughs> oh, that feel nice? Well, well, I'm gonna have to give you a name now. He did save my life. How about, how about Aegis? Aegis. You like that? <laughs> you know what I, hold on, I got something for you. I remembered that I had a bandana in my backpack. Why I took it with me, I couldn't remember. At the very least, I thought it might make someone think twice before they took a shot at him. Here. Come here. Yeah. <laughs> that looks good. <laughs> mm. 
Oh, come on, it looks good on you. Uh, you'll get used to it. You'll get used to it. Aegis was my protector, my savior. The day we first met had bound us together. He had returned to me from the darkness, and now I had the chance to return the favor, sharing food with him, mending his wounds, building a symbiotic relationship. There was something incredibly primal about sharing food, offering it to another being in a display of kinship and camaraderie. Even though we were very different from one another, that act still had the same significance, a deeper meaning that could cross the divide of our species. The only difference being that once you gained an animal's trust, it would never betray you, unlike my own kind. Aegis carefully watched as I cleaned and mended his paw. All right, there we go. All fixed up. Don't chew on it. Oh, come on. Don't be such a baby. You're the big bad wolf. Since the day I lost my world to the fires, my sole companion had been my inner primordial beast along with its savage and selfish nature. I was condemned to an involuntary solitude that had made me bitter and resentful. Having Aegis by my side was bringing me out of my shell, allowing me to push my demons back into the depths. And I was thankful to him for that. It would take me hours to salvage everything from the deer. I even made a separate fire for smoking using a barrel I'd found near the building. This way, I could preserve as much of the meat as I could with the salt I had in my backpack. Aegis and I would be able to eat for many days, weeks even. At least that's what I'd intended to do, before nature decided otherwise. Fire! Oh shit! Oh no, no! Oh wait a minute! It hadn't rained since before the first heat burst. The new world sorely needed it, just not at that moment. Oh, oh. ages! Oh, oh jeez! Right now? No way! Oh man, the deer. I quickly gathered up all of our cooked food and put it inside my backpack. Aegis quickly followed, not wanting to get soaked in the downpour. Inside embrace, we watched in horror as our fires petered out. It was already too late for the smoker. I hadn't even gotten the chance to fully clean the deer before the rain came down, and now, I wouldn't be able to get a fire going in time to salvage the rest of the meat before it became unsafe to eat. Our food source became washed away, along with all our efforts. I couldn't watch anymore, so I decided to be useful, putting out as many empty containers as I could find to collect the water. Oh, damn. I can't believe this. It's crazy. Man. It's really coming down. I guess we needed it, huh? Aegis was restless during the storm. I got a feeling that he'd always hated the sound of thunder. Oh, it's okay. I don't like thunder either. Despite its unfortunate timing, I was still in awe. The first rainfall I'd seen in nearly eight months. The last thing I wanted was to stay in one place for too long, but I wasn't about to start trekking through a torrential rainstorm. It seemed like the perfect opportunity to explore the complex the deer had led me to. Well, we're in 
not going to be able to build a fire. What do you say? You want to do some exploring in here? Yeah? Come on. Come on. Let's go. The hallways were now even darker than before, thanks to the rainstorm. Embrace was fairly secluded, so I thought it likely there might be a few useful items lying around. All right. Flashlight. And... Okay, I hope this works. Oh, yes. Man, I never thought I'd be so impressed by a flashlight. Some of the rooms still held bodies, most of them dressed in hospital gowns. People likely abandoned when the disaster struck. Oh, come on, Aegis. Oh, no, don't, don't go that way. Come on, come on. Oh, no, come on. Oh, it's just a bunch of bodies. Come on this way. Come on, buddy. Some stairs. Let's go. Huh. It's locked. Card reader. Weird. How about the elevator? Okay. We could, uh, we could pry this open. In like a, like a crowbar or something. Okay. I had found a utility closet with all kinds of tools. Oh, no way. <laughs> it's a crowbar, seriously? <laughs> that was way too easy. Oh. Okay. The crowbar was the first thing I slung into my backpack. All right, let's do this. Stand back, buddy. After all, what was an apocalypse without a crowbar? Oh shit, that's hard. Come on. I carefully leaned, looking down into the elevator shaft. I could only see one floor below the main level, where the elevator car was stuck. The cables looked sturdy enough to climb down. Oh, whoa. Okay. Uh... All right, buddy. I'm gonna go down there. Check it out. I gotta get those stairs open. Just, uh... Just uh, stay here, okay? I'll be right back. You know, it's like a, it's like a movie. <laughs> okay, here we go. Aegis sat down, curiously watching me as I leapt onto the elevator ropes. The narrow expression on his face did not appear to be a vote of confidence. I could almost hear him saying, this is not going to end well for you. Whoa. Whoa. Just stay there, okay, buddy? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <sighs> Slowly, I worked my way down to the top of the elevator. It wasn't a long drop, but I played it safe and slid down the cables. I felt uneasy leaving Aegis behind, but the quest for supplies is never ending and all-consuming. Okay. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Oh. Hey, come on, Aegis. 
Come on, it's not that far. Come on, boy. Aegis's furry head appeared over the edge of the elevator, curiously looking down at me. He wasn't the fearful type, and was more than happy to follow me into the abyss. Okay, let's get this thing open. Oh, it's okay. Looks like we're on the bottom floor. Uh, all right. I have to use the crowbar again. Come on, boy. Come on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I quickly regretted succumbing to my incorrigible need to go where I shouldn't. It's a part of our inner animal that is uniquely human. The need to explore. And in this case, straight down an elevator shaft. Oh god, that didn't sound good. surprise, Embrace had a second level below. One that mysteriously had no number indicated on the elevator panel. Oh. You okay, buddy? Okay. Let's get out of here. Oh, here we go again. Oh, man. What if you budge? Okay, how about this? Okay. Go through, go, 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 come on. Come on, and just go. Yeah. Okay, good boy. Okay. Okay, no more elevators. Find the stairs. Oh. Thank God that's open. Aegis? Wait. What is that? What the? The only thing I could see was the frame of a door, outlined in light and situated far down a narrow hallway. The light was steady and unwavering, which made me think it was electrically powered. I hadn't seen anything electronic working since the first heat burst. Lights, cars, radios, everything was rendered useless after the first day. The door was slightly ajar. I unsheathed my machete, ready to defend myself should a hostile occupant lay behind the door. What is that sound? Oh my god. There's power. As I listened closer, the hum of artificial lights flooded my ears. A buzz that was once considered to be the normal background noise of civilization. Now, it seemed so foreign and unsettling. There's power. Okay. Here we go. I reached for the handle. I had no way of knowing what would be in store for us in this mysterious bunker. 
but one thing was certain. There was no going back from here. Philip's Apocalypse, in association with Michael Johnston Media, is a past Bedtime Studio original production. For more information, visit pastbedtimestudio.com.